Episode 17, Ewok to Remember, originally posted December 8, 2012. As you may have guessed from a previous episode, that random updated wicket that I bought back in 2012 didn't remain the only Ewok on my shelf for long. Since the debut in Return of the Jedi and after two straight-to-television Ewok movies and a cartoon, quite a number of other Ewoks not named Wicket have been introduced and immortalized in toy form. And since that first Wicket purchase, I have rekindled my love for these little furry dudes and have tracked down and purchased as many modern sculpted Ewoks as I could find to add to my ever-growing collection. One thing the Star Wars universe is famous, or notorious for, is that almost every character that appeared in the movies has been given an action figure at some point. And if that wasn't enough, almost all of these characters also have some sort of officially approved backstory that you can find online. Seriously, take a look at any crowd scene in any of the movies, like the cantina scene in A New Hope or Jabba's Palace in Return of the Jedi, and I'm pretty sure that every single human, alien, or droid you can spot regardless of screen time, has some sort of detailed write-up that can be looked up in Wikipedia. And when I say detailed, I mean the character's origin, what they were doing before their movie appearance, and what happened to them after. That is, if they managed to survive the movies. Anyway, the Ewoks are no exception to this. Look up Ewok, and you will find quite a number of notable ones with interesting facts, stories, and backgrounds. And so with this in mind, I'd like to tell you more about some Ewoks to remember in my collection. First up, Chief Chirpa. Claim to fame, his name says it all. He was the boss, the leader of the Ewoks. I don't really remember him doing much in the movies, other than sitting on his crude throne and listening to his Ewok advisors. Since he was the chief, I guess you could say he approved the whole alliance between the Ewoks and the rebels. So that's a major accomplishment, I guess. What you may not know is that after the whole Battle of Endor, Chief Chirpa remained the chief of his village until he died. After which, his daughter Nisa, who was introduced as a partner for Wicket in the Ewoks cartoon, took over as co-chief of the tribe, along with Wicket, of course. Low Grey. Claim to fame, he was the head shaman or medicine man of the tribe and a trusted advisor to Chief Chirpa. What you may not know was that apparently he was the one who suggested to Chief Chirpa that they roast and eat Luke and company. Anyway, although initially respected, he started dabbling in dark magic and was exiled from the village for it. And just like Voldemort, his name was never to be spoken again. Tebow, claim to fame? Well, aside from Wicket, this was my favorite Ewok, simply because he didn't look cuddly. In fact, he actually looked like he could kill you with his spear. Plus, unlike most Ewoks who sported cloth hoods, he had some dead animal skull on his head. He was one of the more aggressive Ewoks towards the rebels. However, when they turned out to be friends, he cut loose R2-D2 from his bindings and unfortunately got his ass burned for his troubles. What you may not know was apparently he might have been force sensitive. Paplu, claim to fame, this Ewok played an integral role in distracting the biker scouts by stealing one of their speeder bikes and rocketing out of control through the Endor forests with the biker scouts in hot pursuit. Luckily, he survived that little stunt as well as the Battle of Endor. Aside from Wicket, he's probably the most remembered Ewok from episode six. What you may not know was that after Logre was exiled, Paplu took over as medicine man at the village. Willy and Wonka. Willy Wonka, get it? Claim to fame, these guys along with Chewbacca should be recognized as the true heroes of the Battle of Endor. They were the ones who in the latter part of the battle managed to hijack an ATSC walker that basically turned the tide of the battle in favor of the rebels. What you may not know is that Willy, the brown one with the white cheeks, is actually the older brother of Wicket. They have an even older brother, Wichi, as well as a younger sister, Winda. Wonka, on the other hand, also had a brother, Tokat. After the Battle of Endor, the brothers Tokat and Wonka left Endor to become gunners on the Imperial I-Class Star Destroyer Liberator. Not bad for two little Ewoks. Warok, claim to fame, he was one of the Ewoks who took to the skies during the Battle of Endor on an Ewok glider. What you may not know was, he rocks. Well, there really isn't anything more to say about this guy. He dropped rocks on stormtroopers. Flitchy, claim to fame. At one point in the movie, you see an Ewok jumping up with an Imperial blaster in hand. Well, that was Flitchy. What you may not know was that after the Battle of Endor, while curiously trying to figure out where the lasers actually came out of, Flitchy unfortunately blew off his head. <laughs> Just kidding. Romba, claim to fame. He actually would have remained one of the many nameless Ewoks in Return of the Jedi had it not been for one crucial scene. 
Towards the end of the battle, when the Empire started gaining the advantage, two Ewoks were seen running away from enemy fire when they were rocked by a huge explosion. When the smoke clears, you see one Ewok still alive while the other is dead. Romba is the Ewok who survives, and the scene of him frantically trying to revive his dead friend is one of the few heart-wrenching scenes from Return of the Jedi many little kids will never forget. What you may not know, the Ewok suit of Romba was reused for Wicked's older brother, Weechi, in the two succeeding Ewok TV films. Nanta, claim to fame? This was the other Ewok in that sad scene I mentioned earlier. Unfortunately, Nanta's only claim to fame was that he was the Ewok who died. Yeah, I'm pretty sure a lot of Ewoks died in the Battle of Endor, but to my recollection, his was the only Ewok death shown on screen. What you may not know was that for the longest time, the Ewok who died remained unidentified and was basically referred to by fans as the Ewok named Corpsey. Surprisingly though, Hasbro actually released an action figure of this dead Ewok in 2012 with the proper name Nanta for those who would want to reenact that scene. Noah Pack Claim to fame? Nothing actually. He was just one of the nameless Ewoks that fought against the Empire. Although, he could have been that white Ewok trying to single-handedly bring down an ATST walker by pounding on its foot. What you may not know was that what makes this dude really special is that he was named after Noah, a seven-year-old boy who was about to undergo a major surgery that would require months to recover. He lived near Hasbro's headquarters, and when they found out about his condition, they invited him to tour their Star Wars toy facilities. When they found out he was a fan of the Ewoks, they asked him to choose a couple of Ewoks from a bunch of Return of the Jedi screen caps for their next toy release. He chose Paplu and a white Ewok. When Hasbro realized that the white Ewok still didn't have a name, they decided to name him Noah, or at least an Ewok-sounding version of the name, so Noah Pack. Nisa, claim to fame, she never actually appeared in the movies, but as I mentioned earlier, was created for the Ewok cartoon as a partner for Wicket. What you may not know was that she was Chief Trippa's daughter and took over as co-chieftain with Wicket when her father eventually died. Anyway, given my love for Ewoks, getting myself all the officially released figures just didn't cut it for me, so I decided to make more of my own. I'd just like to introduce some custom Ewoks that I came up with to help populate my personal Ewok tribe. First up, B2 and Begla, named after my two dogs, Beetle, a Cocker Spaniel, and Bella, a Corgi. I chose two Ewok figure bases that I felt best matched their personalities. Beetle, who was a senior dog at this point, was more reserved and chill, and he was constantly terrorized by his little sister, Bella. Unfortunately, Beetle passed away a few years back, so it's nice to have a little Ewok tribute to him. And finally, we have Grohl. Once I made him, I planted him behind the makeshift drum kit in my display, so I gave him a name fitting of his position after one of the greatest rock drummers from the 90s and beyond. And that's it for now, I guess. There are a whole lot of other Ewoks out there, but I know that not everyone shares my interest in these little guys, so I'll just leave it at that. Now with all these Ewoks in my collection, I definitely needed some place for them all to live. But let's leave that story for another time. How about you? Are there any other Ewok fans out there? Who are some of your favorites? Comment down below and tell me your story. Thanks for checking out Stories from the Toy Shelf Redux. For more stories, please like and subscribe to this channel, click on the notification bell for updates, or visit my website at storiesfromthetoyshelf.com, and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Until the next one!